Alright man, peace. So I did a video covering Donovan Mitchell, the high-flying rookie of the Utah Jazz. And during that video, he was asked by Stephen A. Smith if he thought he should be the rookie of the year. He stated that he was not concerned with that award because what was on his mind and what he was focused on was playoff success. Now in this segment, they're going to interview Mr. Ben Simmons, the outstanding rookie of the Philadelphia 76ers, and they're going to ask him the same question. And he is not going to take the same tact as Donovan Mitchell. He's going to make it very plain how he feels about the situation and who he believes the rookie of the year to be. So they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. Let's just start with rookie of the year. Why do you deserve everyone's votes? I think uh, the things I've been doing this year haven't been. I agree with him. I've already stated in another video, this brother is a jump shot away from being one of the top five players in the NBA. If he can come back next season with a consistent 18-foot jump shot, he will be automatically one of the top five players in the NBA. I've been out of the, the norm for most uh, rookies. Uh, but overall, I'm just having fun and playing, uh, playing my game. Uh, your evolution throughout this season has been so fun to watch. Your teammate, J.J. Redick, said he told you back in October and November he thought you were shooting with the wrong hand. And then I think last week he said, you know what, maybe he's right. Um, <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe actually you had it the right it all the while, while. Right, it's whatever I feel comfortable with. And I've spoken to him about it. And, you know, he just tells me to keep doing what I'm doing. And, you know, it's working so far. Yeah, it seems to be working okay. Right. Well, really, it's not working so far, bro, because your jump shot is terrible and you're shooting on the 50% from the free throw line in the last two weeks. So it's not working. You're going to have to figure something out because what you're going to come to realize is in the playoffs, when they have time to seriously game plan for you, they're going to highlight everything that you don't do well. They are going to start the hack of Simmons. So you can't say that everything is working out for you right now. There's a very thin line between confidence and arrogance. Confidence is belief in yourself that you can substantiate. Arrogance is belief in yourself that you cannot substantiate. So you're going to find out the difference come playoff time, bro. Okay, do you feel more comfortable with that, that part of your game? Definitely. I think just working on my game every day uh, and making sure I'm getting those hours in. I don't care how many hours you're getting in. If your jump shot form has your elbow flaring out like that, you're never going to be consistent from the outside. I don't, care, I don't care how many jump shots you're getting up in practice. Let me rewind this back one more time. With that, that part of your game? Definitely. I think just working on my. Now look at his jump shot for him. He's shooting with his left hand and his elbow is flaring out. You're supposed to have your elbow tucked inside. Working on my game every day uh, and making sure I'm getting those hours in, you know, where we are. Terrible form. LeBron James also had very similar form when he first came into the NBA, except, of course, as everybody knows, he shoots right handed. LeBron has greatly improved as a jump shooter because he's brought his elbow more in. Now, if you want to see an example of perfect jump shooting form, in today's NBA, of course, you have Steph Curry, you have Klay Thompson. But for me, probably the most compact jump shooting form that I can remember is probably Isaiah Thomas. I mean, the Isaiah Thomas of the Detroit Pistons. Of course, he's not recognized as being the greatest jump shooter of all time. He's one of the top five streak shooters in NBA history. There's no doubt about that. But his jump shot form was just perfect. But we are practicing and coming every night and uh, developing my game is really pushing us to the next level. I want to talk about the team, too. At the beginning of the season, Coach Brett Brown said the goal is to make the playoffs. The goal line has obviously moved. How dangerous can your team be in the postseason? I think very dangerous. You know, once we get Joe back, I think it's a scary team. Uh, Their team is very scary, especially if they get the outside jump shooting that, that they're going to need to spread the floor. And if Ben Simmons can offset what the game plan of many of these teams that they're going to face in the playoffs is going to be, which is to utilize the hack of Simmons to throw off their offensive game plan. The Philadelphia 76ers are one of the top teams in the NBA in defense and rebounding. Many of these stat metrics that they show as a team are consistent with teams that are serious contenders for world championships. They just may be a little bit ahead of schedule right now. Uh, you know, since it's been out, we've been holding it down and uh, playing team ball more pressure on you both on the court with defenders keying in on you and just in the locker room and on the bench and with the guys how have you handled that since joe went out uh, i think it's been a great opportunity for me um it's, it's i agree he's been great since joel has gone out it's been phenomenal i didn't expect their team to be to keep winning at this clip that they've been winning they've also been fortunate to hit a little weak point in their schedule but once again that's one of the signs of a good team that they're beating who they're supposed to beat
it was a terrible thing that we lost Joe, but at the same time, I think it's going to help the team uh, with me being one of the leaders and uh, you know, using my voice. I want to go off the court real quick to finish up. I know that you and Markel Fultz recently visited Meek Mill in prison, and that the Sixers owner actually set that up. Uh, he told some media that he wanted Meek to give you guys words of wisdom. What did you? This is the type of bullshit that I'm talking about. Why are they going to visit Meek Mill in prison? <laughs> Is this some type of a way to ingratiate them with the citizens of Philadelphia? Isn't it interesting how Meek Mill was persona non grata until he got locked up and now all of a sudden everybody likes him now and he's become a sympathetic figure? People are so disingenuous, man. It's ridiculous. What did you get out of that visit? I think uh, just being appreciative of where we are and uh, knowing, you know, it's not just the Sixers we're representing, it's Philadelphia. Um, you know, the fans, the people of Philadelphia. And I think that's the real, you know, pride that we have every time we step on the floor. Well, if you want to coach J.J. Redick on his shot, we can go find him in the back. We can do I that know, next. Right? I think we should. Okay. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Good man, Rachel's a journalist. Saturday, Simmons was asked by Chris Haynes who should win Rookie of the Year, and he said, quote, who would I pick? Me. 100%. I think I've been playing solid all year. If you look at the numbers, you'll see people who know the game know. I believe that he is going to win the Rookie of the Year, even though I would like them to actually split the award. I think that this is probably the most highly contested Rookie of the Year that I can remember since Grant Hill and Jason Kidd. I can't remember a more highly contested Rookie of the Year award contest since back when Grant Hill and Jason Kidd came out. I really can't. If one of you brothers can remember another one, please correct me. No, and quote this. Do you agree? Ah, this is tough, man, because... About four weeks ago, I was saying, you know, Mitchell. Yeah. And, you know, it's just so dynamic, both of these kids. You look at what Mitchell's doing in the West. After all of the transition with that team losing, all of the different players that they don't have, who are the big guns on Utah? And he's in the playoffs with home court advantage. Look at what this kid's doing. Simmons handles the basketball just beautifully. He's so smooth with it. You almost forget that he's 6'10". He's actually taller than LeBron. In the East, carrying this team without Joel Embiid, averaging a triple double and doing it without shooting jumpers, it's pretty amazing to watch both of them. Now I'm at a point I'm just gonna cop out and say, "Can we have Cole?" <laughs> I'm gonna just take the cop out and say, "Can we have Cole rookie of the year?" I agree, and I don't think that it's a cop out. I think that both of them have played in such an exemplary fashion that they are both equally deserving of the of the rookie of the year award. Well, on the ballot, you can't vote for two. You have to uh, pick one of this. So it has to be an organic tie if that were the case. I was like you. I was on the Mitchell bandwagon. But I think a lot of that was the lack of expectations for Utah once Gordon Hayward left. And, of course, Gobert got hurt early in the year. And he helped carry them. But if you really look at Simmons and what he's done all season long, he's right. It should be Simmons. And particularly this last stretch without Embiid should have cemented it for me. I agree. Even though I would rather see Donovan Mitchell win the rookie of the year because I think that Ben Simmons has MVP quality to his style of play and I think that he's going to win at least one MVP award most likely within the next six or seven years Donovan Mitchell I don't see ever winning an MVP award if he ever does win an MVP award it's most likely because his team is a championship contender and they've won over 60 games I don't see him ever reaching those heights I view Donovan Mitchell more as a Dwayne Wade Damian Lillard type of hybrid player and neither one of those guys have won any MVP awards Yeah, I mean it's hard because Utah lost 16 out of 19 games This was a team that was 10 games under 500 with a negative net rating that they, they look like not just lottery But like chilling with Orlando and Phoenix right. and Atlanta lottery in January 2018 mm -hmm. This is the Utah Jazz and for them today to say we can be a three seed in the right. playoffs a lot of that I saw all of it because Gobert was hurt, but a lot of it is they sit, took the ball and said, it's your team now. Oh, for sure. And Coach, <laughs> Absolutely. And I stated that in the video that I did on Donovan Mitchell. It's very clear that they trust him for a myriad of reasons. They, they find his personality to have all the prerequisites that you would need for someone who would be conducive to attaining the leadership position on a franchise. And that says a lot about how he was raised. Oh, you know how this is for a rookie, for, for, t for a team with a good point guard in Rubio, to take the ball and give it to the rookie and say, it's your team, it says a lot not only about his talent, but his character. Oh. Absolutely, sir.
Awesome. That he's ready for that mantle because a lot of times rookies aren't ready. And so I, I'm, I'm so impressed by Donovan Mitchell. At the same time, <laughs> oh if you ask me who I think is going to be a better player in his career, yeah. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell may go to 100 All-Star games. He might be All-NBA a bunch of times. I think Ben Simmons might be MVP of this league. He's a Absolutely, sir. And let me say this. I did not watch this segment before Mr. Amin El Hassan dropped these jewels. I had no idea that he was going to say this. I did not watch this segment. But it just goes to show you. That's why I state Amin El Hassan, he's a genius. That man is a genius. He's a better yeah, prospect. He's, he's Dr. A, J said it best the other day. He's a he's a generational player. Yeah. So ben Simmons is. But at the same time, we're just voting for this year. Yep. <laughs> and I've de- I've gone on the roller coaster with everybody, but at the end of the day, it's a credit to both of these absolutely kids, how they have lifted up their organizations to situations where they now have home court advantage and a chance to win series in the playoffs. And these are two rookies. Well, let's also get to the response when that quote came out. Yeah. Chris Haynes tweeted that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Spider Mitchell went on Twitter. Yeah, it was I like, love it. <laughs> I love okay. it. I love it. <laughs> Well, you know what, Spider? You should have spoke your real mind when you were being interviewed by Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman. You should have said, I view myself as the rookie of the year. I don't think that he expected Ben Simmons to speak as strongly as he spoke. But Ben Simmons spoke his truthful mind. And you can't get mad at that. You can't <laughs> You can't have this dude. Uh, who's this guy again? Uh, Waka Flocka? I don't follow this most of this modern-day hip-hop, brothers. I... I stopped listening to hip hop for the most part at around 2004, 2005. Like, I don't even know who most of these niggas are today. The point being is this: Donovan Mitchell, he should have spoke his real mind. Don't give dudes side eyes now that they're speaking their truth or their perspective, their their honest opinion, right? AKA their truth, as modern day people say. Uh, if Ben's got the courage to say I deserve it, Donovan Mitchell should be able to come yeah. back and say, Wait a minute. I do too, right? So I, mean, I love it. That's it's different hard, that. It's, it coach, it's hard to it's hard to argue, it right? Is. Now, I like what uh, Amino Hassan has to say most of the time. But what the hell is he wearing? What what is this bullshit? <laughs> it right? is, it's, yeah. it's anyone who says other than the guys, obviously they can be hundred yeah. percent and their teammates or whatever. But for the rest of us, we don't have a, a horse in this race. I don't know how anyone can see him. Like, oh yeah, it's definitely him. Or oh, it's definitely it's definitely. I agree. I mean, unless you're from Philadelphia or Utah, I don't see anyone who's impartial and has been paying attention to how this NBA season has gone who can possibly sit down and evaluate the play of both of these rookies and say, oh, it's definitely Ben Simmons or it's definitely Donovan Mitchell. I totally agree with you, I mean, even though you have that ugly ass smoking jacket on, what the hell you wearing? It's definitely it's tough, man. It really is, cause and both guys are so different. That's the thing yeah. about it. you got one guy six nine, yeah. another guy that's six three. He might be mad at me for saying yeah. that, <laughs> but they're doing it in different ways and they're impacting in different ways. And like I said, man, to both be to have home court, that's big time. Well, and personality wise, for the drama aspect yeah. of it, like it's we fun. see the the reaction and the initial statement. I want, I, I want, I like Ben Simmons yeah. being cocky, Ben Simmons, and I like that Donovan Mitchell's yeah. kind of like incredulous yeah. about it, and. And, you know, considered somewhat more humble, right? Because he didn't expect to be this yeah. good, nor did we expect him to be this good. They asked LeBron James who should be the MVP. What did he say? Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, that's LeBron James. And now that you mention it, who knows? Maybe there's something in the Kool-Aid at Clutch Sports. Because LeBron and Ben Simmons, <laughs> they both have no problem bragging about how good they are and wanting everyone else to recognize how good they are. Well, it's just a personality issue. But Donovan Mitchell... Closed mouths don't get fed, brother. You can't take the humble route and then and then turn the side eye. Either you believe that you're rookie of the year or you don't. So hopefully if he's asked again, he'll speak his real mind. <laughs> Every year. Right? Yeah. Like so that you want that guy to have yeah. that moxie yeah, and absolutely. that belief in himself and, and he and both guys have worked to earn it. R- r- really quick, one last thing. Well uh, let's actually let's, let's turn our attention to the Jazz, who've mm-hmm. been one of the biggest surprises this season. Yeah. They currently sit from the fourth spot out west, which means they don't home court advantage. George, are you shocked by how good they've been? I know we touched on it a little bit. Yeah? Let me say this. I'm shocked about how good the Utah Jazz have been. I'm shocked by how good they've been. But once again, that is testament to Mr. Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, I'm absolutely shocked. I I thought this team would be at best. If everything broke right for them, 
may be fighting for an eight seed. To be in this position where they're going to be a three seed, I, I, I was shocked. They're an elite team right now. Uh, defensively, they've been they there for a elite, couple of elite, years. Yeah. Um, and offensively, now they've got this guy in Donovan Mitchell who can bail them out in big spots in close games, man. And that's all you can ask for, a shot. Listen, if you're Golden State, you want the Utah Jazz to finish at the four seed because you definitely want them to be playing the Houston Rockets in the second round should Houston get out the first round, which I assume that they will because they, they will most likely be playing either Minnesota or Denver in the first round. And neither one of those teams match up particularly well with the Rockets. That's assuming that Minnesota is going to play the same way that they played during the regular season. I don't think that Denver has any other way that they can play, but Minnesota could possibly try to make it more physical which could lengthen that series. I don't think that they have a chance to beat the Rockets, but if they get really physical with the Rockets, it could lengthen that series, and they have the horses to get a little bit more physical with the Jimmy Butler and uh, Taj Gibson. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to assume that Minnesota makes the playoffs. If they don't, and Denver makes the playoffs, I see Denver going out in five games. They might win one game in Denver against the Rockets, but they play too much like the Rockets to have a chance of beating them. But once again, if you're Golden State... You want the Utah Jazz to finish with that four seed, and you want Portland to get the three seed because Portland plays like Golden State or tries to. So you already know that they're not going to beat Golden State, assuming that Steph Curry is back by the second round. And Utah could possibly give the Houston Rockets all the fits that Joe Lacob predicted a certain team would that may precipitate the Houston Rockets not even making it to the conference finals. Who knows? We'll see. Listen, they got a big time staff. All right, Quinn Snyder is easily great coach. Could be coach of the year yep. this year. His staff is awesome. I know those guys. They've been knocking on the door. Their defense has been like that. Their defense has been consistent for a couple of years now. Yep. Now they're putting it together offensively, and you're starting to see a scary team come together. They lost Gordon Hayward, Rodney Hood, Joe Johnson, George Hill, George Hill. Yeah, Boris Diaw was on that team. That they lost a ton of guys that have done it in this league at a high level, and they've replaced them with guys that you may not know all of their names. I, 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 I actually apologize because I, I said Ingles' name wrong the other night. Yo, this dude Donovan Mitchell, he jumps out the gym, man. Damn. The night. Because I don't watch them enough to know them well enough. And that was I felt bad about it. But you don't know all of these guys. Yeah. And they are beasts and they are a scary team to play against and it's fun to watch these young guys do it. That's the scariest thing for me. I remember Joe Ingles uh, draft workout, free draft workout. Oh, I felt so old. <laughs> but listen though, come on, Joe Ingles is out yeah, there no. cruising at like thirty Royce, miles Royce an hour. Royce O'Neal is the guy I thought about. Because I remember watching it, him and I was like is he allowed to play like this? Coach yeah. Olympia, he played. He does. He you know, know what else? Three and he played. Yeah, I'll I tell you what else has been impressive with what Quinn has done. He's found a way to play the two big guys yes. together. Yeah. And still play at a high level. Most teams haven't been able to find that formula to have two non-shooting bigs on the court. Favors is about a 16, 17 yeah. foot, but he's not a stretch no, four right. by any means. And they figured out a way to keep that thing rolling and defend at a high level with two bigs on the court. What? Yeah, because they know how to control pace. You can still play with a four and a five that, that cannot stretch the court as long as you control the pace properly. And that's what they do with Donovan Mitchell and Ricky Rubio. And that's what I constantly speak about when I refer to Mr. LeBron James. That's why he has no chance of beating a team like the Rockets or the Warriors because he refuses to control the pace. He wants to run with those teams because of his pride. He knows better, but he, ha he just has to show that he's in great shape as opposed to slowing the basketball game down and taking the air out of the basketball so that he can take away a lot of the transition points that Golden State and Cleveland like to score. He, he'll get caught up in the mano a mano of me versus James Harden or me versus Kevin Durant should Cleveland get back to the finals. One last question for both of you guys, because you guys have been around the guy I'm about to reference right now a lot. Is there anybody about Donovan Mitchell that reminds you guys of Dwayne Wade? Oh, I, yeah. I, I look at Thank you, sir. Hey. Amino Hassan, bro, it must be because you're from New York City, man. You're a real smart dude. You're a real smart dude. I look at him and I see the young way. Yeah, yeah. I, look, he's young way with a three-point shot. Yeah. Um, you know, Dwayne came into this right. league, and remember, he was, you know, he was the fifth pick in the draft, but that draft was all about LeBron, Melo, and Darko, right? right? And, and even to a lesser extent, Chris. Right. Um, 
But when Dwayne took the league by storm in that rookie season, you know, he was trying to figure out whether he was a one or a two. And I think Mitchell went through a little of that transition earlier this year, too, where he was handling the ball and then he wasn't. He was off the ball. And then they realized he's better off the ball, except in crunch time. Right. Absolutely. But that's where the league is going right now. Where the league is really going right now is no more point guard, shooting guard. It's really just two guards, guys who can both dribble, pass, shoot, score, distribute, whatever you need from them. Very similar to what Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars used to do back in the late 80s. That's what the modern day backcourt architecture really is leaning towards. You see that with the Rockets, with uh, Chris Paul and James Harden. And I think that they're going to try to have a similar setup with Donovan Mitchell and Ricky Rubio. Right. Where you want the ball in his hands. And you also see it, of course, in Portland with uh, Lillard and McCullen. And Dwayne proved it when he crossed over our man Baron Davis. Um, you know, in that game winner. Series. Game yeah. winner. Yeah. That's right. And it, yes, I do. I see a lot of uh, D Wade's traits, and and one of the biggest traits I see is when it's crunch time. Yep. You know, he's got that gene of like, please give me the ball. I'm, I'm willing to take this shot, and if I miss it, so what? Uh, he's a competitor. He gets to the rim whenever he wants. He's already got the two step. His shoulders are out to here. Um, like you said, he's a better shooter than D Wade from three right now. Uh, D Wade picked up that post game pretty quick, so it's gonna, you know, they got some different elements. But man, I can see a lot of D Wade. Well, D Wade came into the NBA at the time when guards were still asked to be able to post up. Remember that D Wade grew up in the Jordan era, so he was heavily influenced by. Jordan style of play as well as the fact that when he came into the NBA you had a Kobe Bryant who had taken the Jordan imprint and understood the importance of being able to play with your back to the basket or with the face up game on the elbow so players like D Wade and Carmelo Anthony they had a lot of 90s basketball late 80s mid 90s basketball imprinted within their style of play Donovan Mitchell like the vast majority of guards in the NBA today, it's mostly a face-up player. He wants to break you down, facing you up, and either finish at the cup or hit you in the face with a three-pointer. Quick, quick question. Did, did Wade, before, I, I don't remember him in high school, mm -hmm. did he know he was a top talent in the country? Or is that a similarity, too? Where, yeah, I don't believe where Donovan was, no. no, I believe, if I remember correctly, he was a late bloomer. Marquette, they kind of caught a diamond in the rough when he went there. No, I don't he believe grew he into him. it. Yeah. But I remember... That, that, uh, that NCAA tournament run that he had in 2003, where he was just unbelievable. To it. Yeah. He really did. He yeah. grew into it. Um, he always had an edge and a, and a chip to him, but I think it just all of a sudden it evolved into something special. Yeah, that last season Marquette we saw. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Huh? All right, here's where the jump... But anyway, that's it on Ben Simmons, as well as a little additional footage of Donovan Mitchell and... A light review of the Utah Jazz. We'll see what happens with this year's playoffs as well as who is fortunate enough to be the recipient of the 2017-2018 Rookie of the Year Award. But anyway, peace.